Well, again, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Feda, for your time and meeting with us today. And the first question is a very simple one. Uh, what brought you to Fielding? Ah, good. Uh, I think I think I, I always uh, think of it the other way. Uh, what brought Fielding to me? Uh, uh, because uh, in uh, 2004, I think, is when I attended the first orientation uh, session uh, for Fielding, and uh, and I think the there there are certain certain words that that caught my ears and and my eyes and. Uh, the wonderful uh, sort of friendships that, that that I've made on that first few hours of the orientation. And then uh, there was a lot of discussions around community, uh, about a sense of appreciation, um, and, and also a lot of students who are already alumni at Fielding that time spoke a lot about uh, scholar practitioner approaches, um, having worked in a, in a humanitarian and development organization, uh, I was very happy to hear uh, you know, about the inclusiveness of the community we work with and, and that being part of the learning journey. So those are the things that really attracted me to building at the first time. Thank you. Um, I have to say, just to add to that, that um, I think your presence at those initial meetings, including the one that we had, for example, in San Cugat in Spain, you also acted very much like an ambassador because your enthusiasm for learning with others and bringing humanitarian work in also helped make um, the path forward for a lot of other students very strong. Yeah. So, so your yeah, idea yes. of saying what brought Fielding to you, I think also fits very well. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I, I, I really enjoyed the, the research sessions that we held. And uh, But even before that, just the, um, when you go to a place and you have this chemistry with, with the people you meet uh, first at first glance and first instance, I think that influenced me a bit because I met a, a very diverse group of people. Uh, uh, there was a lot of interrogation into certain certain discussions and very lively, uh, at times provocative. And I thought, okay, this is the right place to be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Um... Well, should I just, uh, Dr. Sai, should I just go down? Yeah, go ahead, Elena. I didn't, I was just trying to add to the conversation. I didn't mean to interrupt. Oh, no, but... that's perfect. That's perfect. Uh, we're supposed to be in the conversation. That's yeah, great. yeah. And I mean, with, with George and I, we have such a wonderful history together uh, that I'm remembering many, many occasions that um, yeah. we shared yeah. thoughts and ideas and uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, well, then I'll go to my second question, which is um, uh, what was your career path since graduating from Fielding? I think the, after the graduation at Fielding, I got more into um, appreciating others more. So uh, what, what is it that uh, the teams that I worked with uh, brought to me or uh, the level of collaboration I gained from my colleagues. Uh, I, I moved from, from, I think, being a, a team leader into being more of an interlocutor. I gained a lot from the wonderful uh, experience I got from uh, the amazing Doty, uh, the amazing Fred, uh, the, the, the amazing uh, Dr. Manning, uh, who are in my dissertation committee. Uh, the, uh, and so that was a really good anchor for me. So progressively moving from uh, unit-based leadership to more of collaborative leadership, uh, uh, having gone through um, three or four different countries since uh, finishing my, my, my study there. Um, and those three to four positions have incrementally brought in uh, 
more learning. Uh, I feel like I'm still a student more each, each, each country I move to. Um, and each person I meet has actually become uh, a teacher to me, uh, especially the community I work with who have amazing solutions to, to um, you know, these lifelong problems that we try to respond to. And we, we think we know how to respond, but uh, fielding, uh, I think, gave me the chance to, to appreciate learning from, uh, you know, being a learner. So uh, the, the, my career path has actually been more about uh, how enriching others are to, to, to me as I move along. Lifelong learner. Yes, it never ends. And uh, as, uh, as uh, uh, Fred taught me about systems thinking, it's one thing interlinked to the other and it never stops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And one thing, because at the time you had been in South Sudan, in Darfur, just around the time that it was becoming South Sudan, but you've also moved yeah. around um, while retaining yeah. those relationships. You moved because you were in Rome for a while. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then, and then, of, of course, the, the the each country though different in terms of the boundary, you cross boundaries, but uh, relationships are almost similar, and 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 you grow those relationships and learn from them. So, the 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 fact that fielding gives you that that opening of learning about transformation and social justice, it's something that. Um, you know, keeps on coming up in, in all the discussions and, and the consciousness about that uh, becomes more evident in every, every encounter. So, yeah, it's a growth part. Yeah, go ahead, Elena, sorry. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Um, again, uh, uh, another question, which I think uh, Dr. Starr helped uh, shape. Um, so how has your learning at Fielding offered you ways of bringing scholarship to practice? I think you've already touched on that. Yeah, and, and, and it's, it's, a, it's a discussion that we can have for many hours because uh, we, we, we had uh, a couple of uh, world cafes with the Fred and, and colleagues and, uh, and others. We, we met in Rome for a, a session. We had a good, uh, we got good sessions of pasta in, in right. Rome. Italy and uh, and I think the the fact that uh, fielding uh, took us to Italy, took us to Spain, um, uh, took us to Atlanta, the that learning uh, never ended, and and it was it was uh, um, an opening um, to to every every subject of discussion was. Uh, uh, a start a startup to a bigger discussion so uh, and, and and so it was always non-stop so what what it, I think one feeling brought in into into us as a group in my organization because we shared a lot of this learning with my colleagues with my bosses was that um, uh, you the inclusivity of your team members is as important as your growth in your career uh, uh, how successful you make the other person be is actually determinant of how you, you become satisfied with, with your growth. And for me, that has been an amazing journey. And I continue to learn. I continue to read a bit about fielding and, and, and read the work that people are doing. So uh, amazing. Thank you. Um, I actually want to disclose that I'm also, uh, while I work at Fielding, I'm also a Fielding student, and uh, Dr. Steyer is my professor for this term. So. Ah, <laughs> congratulations. Uh, yeah, just by having Fred as your professor, you, you passed the exam. <laughs> I'm, I'm learning a lot from working with Elena also, and Elena is doing some really creative work bringing video into scholarship and recognizing, in fact, we were thinking I guess this isn't a formal part of the interview, but um, if you were at the time that you did your dissertation, if you would make a video or a documentary film about your work, um, it would have been a fantastic 
Yeah, yeah. Because you, you also have brought so much visual thinking. You know, even your way of writing evokes these wonderful images. That, yeah, uh, yeah, it, I, yeah, I think Maybe like, we can make that a project for the future is how to <laughs> yeah. make a documentary times, about your work with the World Food Program. Yeah, and at times my writing, I think, is kind of sometimes very hopeless writing because I just write what comes to my mind and uh, I feel like it's not... Uh, APA standard sometimes, and uh, but it makes sense to some. <laughs> you know? uh, I think the, the the video that we made during the dissertation session, I think I still have that, and and I, I usually yeah. uh, kind of scan back down memory lane. Uh, amazing. So I think Elena's uh, work is is very uh, pertinent and relevant to how even um, yeah. as I continue learning the. The bringing visuals and innovation into into learning and and and, uh, and experiences is, is is the way is the way to go. Thank you, thank you. And uh, well, I see that behind you are the United Nations Development Goals um, on the poster. And maybe you could share what does it mean for the World Food Program to receive the Nobel Peace Prize? And what does it mean for, for you also as an employee? Oh, it's, it's, it's hard to describe, Elena and Fred. It's like uh, you, feel like, you feel like going to the beach and partying all time to celebrate this. <laughs> but uh, but this, this award just brings, uh, makes it's, Makes one feels humbled, uh, really, um, and uh, and and really the recognition of especially my colleagues who are working in in the currently um, hot the current hotspots the the Yemen's and the Syrias and the Iraq um, and South Sudan um, and and some of them in in the areas of West Africa we have terrorism becoming a bigger problem in Mali. Uh, th these are the colleagues actually who deserve this this um, um, this award more, uh, and and I think sharing it with with everyone, not just the World Food Program, but across all the uh, actors who are busy working to make sure the Sustainable Development Goals uh, uh, become a reality. Uh, it is it is a big honor. Uh, it is also a big um, source of. Uh, you know, um, confidence that the work we are doing uh, is recognized and therefore giving one the, the morale to, to do more. Um, because as you know, the, the toughest thing even in, in any competition is when you get the first position. So you have to keep that going for years. So, uh, and Fred knows being a marathon, uh, marathon lover is how to keep that going for years is the biggest uh, challenge. So uh, for, for, for me and for my colleagues in the World Food Program, we see this as a, not just as a honor or as a recognition, but just as a, as a realization that we have to do more. There's a lot more work to be done uh, to, 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 to make those who actually benefit from our assistance, feel this honor also to them. Thank you, thank you. Um, and uh, then another question also uh, inspired by Dr. Steyer, and I think that's where systems thinking may be having me into, what is the role of collaboration uh, process in, uh, in the World Food Program uh, and, and its success? Oh. Yeah, one of, just one of the reasons behind the question, and thanks for asking it, Elena, is that the Nobel Peace Prize Committee in, in Norway made a special point of recognizing the importance of collaboration in how they were awarding, giving the award this year, and the importance of collaboration in the World Food Program. And I know that was such an important part of your work and has been. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's true. Um, they, they, they... And, and that's what, um, um, if, if I remember the days of um, uh, preparing our knowledge area um, uh, discourses at Fielding, uh, you, had to, you had to learn how to 
at times collaborate with the faculty and other students in order to understand what you want to, to um, sort of pursue as, as an in-depth area of study uh, in your knowledge area. So I think that spills over into the work that uh, the World Food Program uh, has done is how, how to make sure that others are involved. Uh, the levels of collaboration makes uh, uh, the end result or the end outcomes become a reality. If you're dealing with hunger, uh, you, you, you have a lot of other actors. You have private sector, you have financial, sec uh, financial service uh, partnerships, you have governments, you have other sister uh, UN agencies, you have uh, non-government organizations. So in order to to, to bring out the best of all these partners, the level of collaboration has to be very uh, high and, uh, uh, and, and also very appreciative because each, each of these people bring in value into the process of uh, delivering um, results that address hunger. Mm -hmm. Okay, just to follow up on that, thanks so much for that, George. But I mean, one of the things that I remember, uh, this is the joy of working with you, is your recognition of the difficulty of the work, but the enthusiasm for doing it and really trying to make the world a better place. Uh, and you're also, this emerged even in your final oral review, what a good storyteller you are in the sense of bringing the lives of people that you're working with into, uh, into your scholarship and practice. And I'm wondering if there are some uh, stories or occasions that really stand out for you now since the time that you got your, your you had your final oral, just occasions of work with the World Food Pro Program with others that just, you know, say, <clears throat> this is really why I'm doing this work. If there is a story you'd like to tell about that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think that, that there are very many, many numerous stories that, that, um, Show you know that that collaborating is 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 like a lifesaver. I remember very uh, most recent in in northern Uganda before I came to Namibia, uh, when lockdown hit uh, the region, we, everything was shut down, and uh, but we still had to deliver food assistance. There were one million uh, South Sudanese refugees that we needed to make sure continue to receive food. Um, but then going to the local uh, government authorities uh, and, and, and sitting down with them and, and just explaining that, yes, for, for you and I, probably we have a stock of food somewhere because we, we knew this was coming. But for these uh, refugees who just crossed the border two days ago, yesterday, in the last two days, they had to deal with that problem of running away from conflict and, and therefore to uh, expose them or to subject them to a lockdown situation basically means going hungry and we know what that will result to and and just sitting down with the local authorities and them drafting a letter a letter that you show to the um, policemen on the road who try to stop you because you are going beyond I mean um, the sort of contrary to the lockdown regulations and, and just making sure you reach the people that are supposed to be assisted. Uh, that, was a, that was a breakthrough uh, and just shown that, showed even at community level, the level of collaboration really uh, enabled making sure that people receive food. And then fast forward a few weeks later, um, when we realized that this might continue, we just uh, again talked to the same officials and said, we have to start growing food because borders are closed and uh, we relied a lot on food from outside. So, um, uh, you know, if, if not more than 10, 15 people are allowed to, to assemble in one place, but people can still work in the farm in a dispersed manner and produce food. And so that level of understanding even around the community, because even the, the farmers were scared to go to their farms there was a lot of misunderstanding about COVID. Um, people thought that uh, going to the river to fetch water, you'll find that that water is, or contains uh, COVID, uh, COVID germs. So there was a lot of uh, unclarity around COVID when it started. So 
just explaining to uh, the farmers that, you know, this, if it's a, a cabbage or carrots within a few weeks will yield its fruits and uh, it will be safe. Uh, we will make sure we will make sure we bring somebody to check the safety uh, for you to consume it. So he had a whole range of collaborative uh, segments, but that just showed how important that is, especially mm -hmm. at the ground level. Yeah, I mean, another aspect of that, such a beautiful story, and another aspect of it for me is how the importance of flexibility, sort of recognizing that the human needs come first, and there are going to be some constraints, but we have to have some flexibility, and even thinking of changing from just giving aid to really developing, develop, you know, developing possibilities for development and farming and the learning part. So that that yeah. story, uh, it's a wonderful story of the importance of flexibility yeah. too. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, yeah, and 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 that 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 spoke well also to the kind of study uh, that you, Fred, and colleagues we worked on the complex adaptive systems, <laughs> which was uh, which was my formed part of my my right. dissertation. Um, how how do you ensure that uh, you look at things in a nonlinear way, uh, and so. Um, uh, you know, farmers and the community adapting to different uh, uh, challenges and, and, and making sure that, you know, we can still feed ourselves. Uh, and, and to some extent, it, is, it was actually a lesson learned uh, that uh, probably even in future, in order to ensure resilience, um, we'll continue to grow food locally and, and less and less importation of food, because I think there was an imbalance about the understanding of globalization or regionalization, uh, thinking that it will rely more and more on uh, other sources of food. Or, uh, but of course, there has to be a balance. There, there still has to be some self-sustaining self -sustaining measures uh, in, in the community. Another thing I really appreciate your story and that, um, Eleni, you should read George's dissertation <laughs> because what your story just illustrated and what your dissertation did also is, you know, complex adaptive systems for some people that, you know, it's such an abstract idea. And, mm -hmm. uh, but what you did was to, with your story, really bring it to life and say, well, yes, it's an abstract idea, but this is how it plays out in terms of thinking about food, food security, and collaboration in, in difficult places. Yeah, 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 and and that and that was uh, it, it was interesting to 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 actually come like a, like I said in the beginning of this uh, discussion, like how fielding came to me rather than me coming to fielding is like uh, you know I found uh, these opportunities to to it's actually like like practice in forming theory. Uh, writing, writing our stories from the field and trying to find out how do you harness, uh, harness these stories to, to actually inform uh, production of knowledge. Like uh, I remember we used to have that wonderful discussion in Santa Barbara, uh, where I think as a first time as student, uh, uh, research student, we always reminded you are here not to consume knowledge, but to produce knowledge. So, so yeah, so it was nice to see um, that uh, the, the, the experiences in the, in the field or where we worked were actually experiences that went to inform policy at a higher level once they see that you have, uh, you have some evidence um, that supports either change of policy or uh, a change of practice, yeah. Mm. So I'm wondering about now that the World Food Program, just consistent with what you're saying, now that the World Food Program has won the prestigious Nobel Peace Prize, does that change or just does that, in, you know, create new possibilities for the World Food Program or is it really just a, well, and I shouldn't say really just that, but is it a way of reinforcing what you're already doing, the, the good work that you're doing? Um, yeah, I think, I think Fred is, is, is both 
is both reinforcing uh, what we, we're doing and, and, and this recognition, um, but it is also going to bring change in the, in, in, in the way um, most, most uh, um, uh, sort of different people in the world view the World Food Program, because uh, the last couple of years, uh, they the World Food Program has faced uh, various levels of uh, difficulty in, in, in resourcing. And so uh, I think this recognition also uh, hopefully will, will, will help to convince uh, more uh, sponsors to, to be part of being in their partnerships into the World Food Program. Uh, but also that said, uh, it's also challenging internally WFP to, to put in place all levels of, of improvement that will make it sustain the Nobel Prize uh, categories, like, like sustaining your business class level of service and uh, maybe even offering better in, in a more efficient way and more effective way. So uh, it's, it's, it's kind of uh, uh, instilling in, in us and in the whole organization uh, a, a sense of urgency also to to do things in a, in a, in a, in a more uh, efficient way and, and effective yeah. ways. So that probably in the next year or two, we can continue to get our Nobel Prizes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, that's a wonderful answer because, you know, a lot of times, I mean, for many, the, you know, getting any Nobel Prize is the sort of the accumulation, the end point of a, of a wonderful career. Uh, yeah. But in your case, it's, it, it is not the end. It's really a beginning of ways of making the work more visible and continuing it. So it's, it's not as though the World Food Program is now going to retire saying, okay, we got the, <laughs> we got the Nobel Prize. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. Now how yeah. to build on that recognition and to build on its resources. So your answer is a, it's a beautiful answer. Oh, thanks. And, and like you said, uh, it's, it's, it's uh, 2030 is not far. That's the SDG year for ending hunger. So it's kind of, uh, uh, we got to run that marathon as, 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 <laughs> as uh, en energized as we can. So uh, I think the, the Nobel Prize is, is, is one of the, like you can say, uh, the Red Bull moment, the energizer <laughs> moment to keep, <laughs> to keep going. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm wondering what, because you've given so much back to Fielding, what can we at Fielding do to help the World Food Program? I think the, the, making a financial contribution. I'm not sure Fielding is prepared for that. <laughs> well, that will be there other ways, to. for example, <laughs> students doing projects or faculty doing projects that can help the World Pro Food Program, as we talked about in Rome many years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I think there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of um, sort of possibilities uh, as we talked about collaborative uh, opportunities for, for fielding to engage with, with World Food Program. There's a lot of uh, um, learning that, that, that we need to continue deriving from the work at World Food Program and it's, it's institutions and uh, colleagues in fielding who can, can bring value to this. Uh, by, by helping in research, by helping in evidence collection, uh, by helping in consolidating or analyzing the, the stories, like stories are coming out in order to not just to inform people about what work we're doing, but also to really um, address areas that, that, that contribute towards uh, ending hunger. Um, uh, we, we've had uh, recent, I think yesterday I saw I saw a story about the the cost of a plate of food in 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 New York is about uh, sixteen cents, uh, which is like maybe less than less than one or two percent of uh, a New Yorker's uh, weekly salary, uh, whereas the cost of a plate of food in Sudan is um, almost nine hundred cents, which is, and and that only. On, and that accounts for 90% of the person's income in Sudan. Mm -hmm. So there's this disparity that uh, uh, the more we, we, we talk about it and bring out evidence like the, the, the story about cost of food, uh, cost of the a plate of food, 
uh, it makes people understand how serious it is uh, because the, the world has become very uh, statistical, <laughs> I should say. Uh, the, even as we, we, we express our emotions about the suffering out there, but it's also the data analytics that go with it that can convince people sometimes that the, there is a lot of imbalances in the world that needs to be addressed to ensure that we, we get to ending hunger. Yeah, that's so important in terms of how do we persuade people to contribute and to appreciate world hunger. You know, we have the analytics with data, but we also have the stories that you bring to life um, that are as important, or in some cases more important. Yeah. yeah. Um, so Elena, George, we can talk forever. I mean, this is also a chance to catch up. Um, I don't know if you had other questions and I know George, you're, you're extremely busy and it's much later in the day for you than it is for Elena who maybe hasn't even had two cups of coffee yet today. I don't know. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it's only in the morning in Santa Barbara. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just have one, uh, one last question and it's related to something you mentioned about the, um, you know, 2030 as the goal. Uh, this coming issue of uh, Fielding Focus magazine is titled New Horizons. And I wanted to ask you, what do you, uh, what are the three things you are looking to forward to in 2021? Hmm. I haven't, I haven't gone that far yet, but <laughs> I think, uh, I think for me, it's just, uh, number one is is the the current situation with COVID nineteen. Mm -hmm. uh, just looking forward to um, a realization uh, by the community, by the leaders of this world, that this is a serious problem and needs to be given serious attention. Uh, so I look forward to um, maybe as many of us, uh, the leaderships, the um, you know all the actors on the ground to, to, do, to, do, to do better in, in addressing uh, the COVID-19. Um, I think the, the second area that I, I look forward to is, is, is just um, the, and so the collaboration to expand and improve this collaboration because uh, whether it is uh, towards addressing hunger or um, you know, ed ending child, um, you know, mortalities. Uh, the, the closer people work, the more results and the better results we achieve. And uh, personally, that's one thing I want to bring more into my, my daily life uh, to, to really, you know, respect others more and, and to appreciate others more because I, I have learned from many years in, in the, in the World Food Program that that's that's where you get benefits of uh, from, and, and lastly, I think it's it's just the the again importance of well-being, and I think uh, I, I remember in in fielding that was one of the some of my colleagues used to do a lot of research in that area, and I think it's very important that um, as we work, as we study, as we uh, like Fred go doing our marathon, uh, it is important that we, we observe our well-being and, and just uh, uh, staying healthy and, uh, and as humanly possible, uh, respect our, you know, our lives and, and our health. So, yeah. So that we... Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Fed. Uh, what what an opportunity uh, to to have to have a chance to speak with you. Um, I will just stop recording now.